Welcome to Coast to Coast Creatives, a podcast for and about working professional artists within the entertainment industry. I'm Torn Cavins Flores, and along with my co host, Joe Funk, we interview actors, directors, photographers, writers, and many, many more. Today, we'll be hanging out with Russell Thomas, who currently plays Vice President Eli on Tyler Perry's The Oval. In this episode, we cover his time, and mine, though slightly more limited, his time on the show, his reason for acting, and a couple tangents on our shared love for movies. Let's get it started. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Coast to Coast Creatives. Our guest today is a fellow actor and plays Eli, the vice president on Tyler Perry's The Oval. Please welcome Russell Thomas. Hey, how's it going, fellas? It's going good, well. How good. are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Super excited about yeah. this. I've been excited about this, uh, yeah, since we, since we worked together, which was... A whirlwind for me. <laughs> <laughs> I had never worked with uh, Tyler Perry before, um, but it's 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 great to have you here, and thank you so much for for being here. We uh, really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, of course, of course. So, I mean, yeah, let's just start out. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm I'm one of those strange LA natives. Uh, a lot of times, people are like, "Hey, where are you from?" Like Los Angeles, like, but where are you from? I'm like, Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 been uh, it's been cool. I, I I really have a a big spot in my heart for the city of Los Angeles, and the industry is is a big part of why I love Los Angeles. Kind of growing up and seeing, you know, sort of movie productions here and there, and wondering like, "Oh, that'd be cool to do someday." Um, so it was just kind of a, a natural thing, I guess, to kind of slide into to working in the industry one way or another. And I grew up playing a lot of football, and my start in the industry was actually doing football stunts. And so when I graduated from college, I, I went to UCLA, and I started doing football stunts. And I just fell in love with the, the process of filmmaking, and I was like, what other stuff can I do um, in this industry? And so I started you know, studying acting, doing commercial auditions and moving my way up to theatrical auditions and stuff like that. And at the same time, doing other stuff like film crew stuff, just, just anything I could do to get myself on set. And so that's just kind of been the, the, the quick story of my, my career path of just doing whatever I can to, to be on set and to be creative and to work with creative people. And just got uh, lucky enough and blessed to, to work with Tyler Perry on the Oval. And it's been like you said, a whirlwind. It, it's not just you, everyone on, on that show. We, yeah. We get into it. It's a, it's a very fun production and it's a wild ride. So, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's funny. You mentioned the football thing. We actually have another friend who was quarterback at Ohio state and he's really? done a lot of, yeah. And he's yeah. done a lot of the, the football stunt work and uh, yeah. like organizing plays and stuff on set. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it, and it seems to be thing. it seems to be a small world with that. Do you know Ben Cassandy? I I don't know Ben Cassandy, but it is definitely a small world. Yeah. I, I bet we can compare some some names for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's most so definitely. cool. And I'd like to ask you, what got you interested in acting in the first place? <sighs> that's that's a tough one. I, I think I come my my entry into the industry. I think comes from my love of watching films so I, I was an only child and i i would spend a lot of my like nights growing up watching shows watching movies i would watch the same movies kind of over and over again and it didn't really know why i was just like i just want to keep like i love that movie i want to be back in that world like i know one summer when i was uh, I, I had to look through and see when this movie came out but bill and ted's excellent adventure like my sixth grade summer or something like that i, I must have watched that movie a hundred times over the summer kind of thing you know, and I just, I really fell in love with the the experience of going to the movies, of, you know, dimming the lights at home and putting on Star Wars again. My mom would be like, Star Wars again? Yeah, Star Wars again. I love this movie. So uh, I think from that is what really became sort of the, the, uh, 
the ground in which this, the seeds of my career kind of sprouted from. And so when I got my first stunt job, I was a little nervous that seeing how a movie was made might kind of destroy my, my fantasy of what movies were. But it did the opposite. It, it actually gave me a greater appreciation because yeah. now instead of just seeing the movie, I'm actually I can kind of step back and say, oh, well, how do they do that? You know, and and start to understand the the process and creativity that goes into the the arts and crafts of making the movie and not just the finished project. So those two things together just just kind of gave me a, a passion and motivation to explore different uh, pathways to get work in the industry and just to find different ways to contribute to the the tradition of filmmaking is what I, I kind of like to call it. And really the tradition of storytelling, which, you know, predates uh, filmmaking is basically our whole history, right? Like yeah. just us as humans, we love to tell stories is kind of like, I, I imagine the, the, you know, the cavemen, you know, sitting in, around the fire and, so, you know, a, a couple of the the members of the tribe are you know in different garb and they're they're telling stories for the rest of the tribe and I, I think this is a big part of uh, the human experience and so just kind of plugging into that that through line that that connects you know us through history is is kind of like the way I like to characterize it and yeah I I really like that um can you <laughs> imagine like around the campfire the story and then there's like a a caveman like Martin Scorsese over here, like yeah. <laughs> directing everything <laughs> or a caveman, like Stanley Kubrick, just like yeah. do it again, do it again, <laughs> do it again. Yeah. Um, so far it's, uh, uh, except for the, the football thing, it's like looking into a mirror. Um, you mentioned the, the rewatching movies over and over. I, I do the same thing. And I still do. And you mentioned yeah. Star Wars and such, but I, specifically, what's what's one of your movies that you constantly go back to? Ooh, uh, so one that I kind of watch at least once a year is Aliens. The oh yeah, one. yeah, yeah. That that movie for me has a lot of magic. Uh, James Cameron has a real skill set when it comes to storytelling and there's things that he's doing technically with the story but also the 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 storytelling that to me is very well done in this movie in particular you know and even though the effects have gone way past that with what he's done with avatar and i haven't seen the second one yet um but i'm probably gonna go see it this next week um you could see when you watch avatar the beginnings of that in aliens. And so I just, I love to go back to this movie. There's a theater down the street from where I live that they'll play it on film every once in a while, like uh, kind of once a year thing. That's amazing. And I've gone to that a couple of times. Um, but I also just, I, I tend to watch it at home and just kind of get in the feel and like the sound design on that movie, the way that there's the, you know, the motion trackers and it does the beep beep. Yeah. And to me, that's, that's great storytelling because you can hide the monster Sometimes with like uh, horror films, they want to show the monster too soon, and it's like, no, you got to build a little bit of that anticipation first. And so he he uses the sound design to kind of build that anticipation, and he's really good at setting up something and then paying it off later. And so you can see once you start to see it a few times and study it and break it down, you see that he's planting all these seeds in the beginning that then come to fruition at the end in a really meaningful way. So to me, it's just. It's a beautiful movie. That's one I, I kind of watch, uh, like kind of in you know, October ish, kind of get in the the fall feeling. I have different movies for different seasons, kind of yeah, thing, and so me that's, too. Yeah. that's one that kind of comes <laughs> up here. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's oh man, I I completely agree with all of that. And you know, you mentioned the effects in that movie, and I love special effects, like old school, yeah. just like yeah using crap around the house to make an alien or something, you know, like I, I love that stuff. And so much of that holds up in aliens. Like it really does. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. Like even the, the miniature work on that still looks really good to me. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know if maybe a younger audience would be like, Oh, I want to see it like CGI and looks like hyper realistic. Like, no, that looks good to me. Like it's, it does. It, it feels good to, to, to just to look at that stuff in the, um, yeah. There was a little documentary on Netflix about how they made different movies, and Aliens was one of the ones that they go into. And they talk about when they were making the the Queen Alien, 
and yeah. the sort of original mock-ups were just trash, trash bags. bags. <laughs> yeah. And so they would like that became a phrase for these. You know, the guys would go on to do you know more and more stuff afterwards, but they, they were just kind of creating these kind of special effects at this point, and they would use that as kind of shorthand for like let's just do the trash bag version, basically. Yeah. And so like you you see all that like like yeah like like what you're saying you you love the special effects and you love the way that they problem solve and they use their creativity and their skill to create these things that really work well on camera and it, it just movie's beautiful yeah. yeah it really is and and honestly like the yes james cameron knows how to build the the suspense and intrigue and stuff like that yeah. but in aliens it honestly a lot of it comes from just necessity of like they can't yeah. just show you this trash bag monster like yeah, right exactly, away exactly. they have to shoot yeah. it in a certain way like you know with yeah. shadows and darkness to kind of like hide all that but no it's i i completely agree with you very well put together yeah. movie another yeah. great uh movie for miniatures of his is terminator 2 like sure. at the beginning yeah. yeah he's he's really good with uh with miniatures and perspective and um, yeah. we could get really off track and make this like a three-hour podcast yeah. <laughs> if we just talk about movies <laughs> um, i'm like yeah, I'm I'm really <laughs> excited right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about the Oval, just because that's how you and I met. And I guess the first thing we can kind of use to dip a toe into that is what what was the booking process like for you? Ooh, that's a good story. Uh, so. This was 2021, I want to say, like, kind of around February of 2021. So, like, before – so this was all kind of in the pandemic world, right? And things would kind of shut down for a good six months in 2020, and then things sort of, like, revved back up in chunks. And I remember in February of 21, I started getting a ton of auditions, and I was – that's the busiest I'd ever been – auditions just kind of like I'd be doing an audition I'd get a notice for another audition kind of thing I'm like wow what's going on and so in the midst of this crazy period of lots of auditions I got an audition for Tyler Perry's The Oval and so I was like all right let's do it like I was already doing two other auditions that day and I'm like I'll throw it on the third one let's go and and I remember taping because uh, uh, I know in Atlanta, they'd been doing self-taping for a long time, but self-taping in Los Angeles was kind of a new thing, but it was still a, a, a new process for me. I'll put it that way. And I did the audition and I sent it in, but it was in the midst of a bunch of other auditions. And it, I, I just kind of blew through it. The only thing I knew is that Tyler Perry works very quickly. And so I wanted to make sure that I got it in um, uh, promptly, right? Like I didn't want to wait till the last minute. I wanted to make sure I got in early because I know that that's important to them. So I, I did that. I get the call back kind of a week later, and uh, they call and ask for my availability for this time period. I'm like, ooh, that's a, that's a bite. Like, that sounds like they're interested. And I, I remember talking to my manager, and they're like, oh, I, I think that they're going to go a different way. And so I kind of like, okay, cool. I'll, you know, I got some other auditions. We'll see what comes up. But that was exciting to get, you know, if, if they're asking to see if you're available, that's a good thing, right? And it was, I, I could t I still totally remember this. It was a Sunday and I was doing some grocery shopping for my folks. And I get a call from my manager and like, you booked the Oval. And I think my concept of what I would, how I would respond in that situation would be elation and like dancing. I was in shock. I was, I, my, my response was, I did? Instead of like, I did. Oh, that's exciting. I can't believe it. I was like, What? <laughs> and so my manager, I remember like the, the disconnect between how my manager, she's like this, like so sweet and bubbly and, and very kind and warm. And she's so excited and like cheering. And I'm on the other side, like, uh, and on, uh, on one hand, I was shocked that I had booked it because it was by far the biggest role that I'd, I'd ever booked for. And I kind of didn't even know how big a role it was when I was doing the auditions because I was in the midst of all these other things, so I didn't even really pay attention and realize that it was this big, like, it was the vice president of a show called The Oval in the White House. So like, yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. And so it was a Sunday, and they were like, uh, can you come to Atlanta on Wednesday? <laughs> oh, my God. Because you have God. to quarantine, right? And, and so Sunday evening, I started getting the scripts, 
And I was like, oh, wow, I, I got to get to work. And so that whole booking process was very fast um, and very much a whirlwind. Uh, and I, I was just stunned and in shock. I had to call my manager back like 20 minutes later and be like, I don't think I expressed how excited I am, but I'm very <laughs> excited and very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but just total shock was, was really the, my initial response. Um, and then, you know, that first season, it was the third season for the show, but my first season, it was a whole process because of COVID. And so there was a whole quarantine period that you had to go in and a whole bubble that uh, Tyler Perry had set up at the studios, which was really amazing. You know, it was like, it felt a exciting to be on the show B it was, it felt safe and they had taken so much care to make sure that, you know, that they were trying to be as safe as possible and see just mind blowing to see like the scale of production out there. So that whole first season was just it. That'll, that'll stick with me for the rest of my life. It was a beautiful experience. Absolutely. And it's crazy yeah. that you got to experience the bubble. Um, yeah. And it, I mean, he sort of kept a big chunk of the industry running because of the bubble. Yeah. It's, it, it's cool how I, there's so many studios out here that are like these sustainable communities. I've done studio yeah. tours in, in Los Angeles. If I've been to like, you know, Warner brothers and Paramount, all the usual ones, you sit on the friend's couch yeah. and you take the photo there. Um, <laughs> but here, they're, like they're, they're, they're popping up with new studios every year. And whenever I, dig and do a little bit of research onto them they're like it's also going to be this living community here's the gym here is like yeah. th this area this area and it's all going to be um a very green friendly and solar powered and it's 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 very very cool to see that they're they they i don't think it's purely because of covid because tyler perry had this idea even before the pandemic sure, hit yep. but like these these sustainable communities are are, are really really neat yeah and i off of all of that, another question here is because I've talked to people who have been in some kind of bubble in the industry, and yeah. some of them feel like they were sort of trapped. Some of them really enjoy it. Like, what was your, sure. what was your feeling on that? So for me, in the first in the first season, it was exciting because I was in this new position, right? So I, I had that like that adrenaline from that also because I had a lot of material to learn in a very short period of time. I didn't feel trapped because I just needed to get, you know, a foot away from my, my script at all times. And I was constantly just kind of nose to the grindstone kind of thing. So I, I never really felt the, the enclosure of the bubble in that sense. And it was uh, a, a pretty quick schedule. So it was really, you know, sort of, three, four weeks of being in that intense bubble. And then they would, they would send you home when, when you were done shooting. So I found that experience enjoyable and to the point that now, um, now that we're kind of past the bubble and they're not as strict with it, but they still have a lot of those safeguards in place. Uh, I still like to stay on Tyler Perry cause you know, they have the housing there. I like to stay there when I'm in Atlanta because it's super convenient. And like you said, they have a gym there. That's a great gym. So I can work out and do that part. I can walk to set in the mornings and it, it's, for me, it's convenient and it's also keeps me focused so that I'm not like getting distracted and I can stay focused on learning my lines and, and being prepared each day for work. So I, I love being there. Um, I would Appreciate like to it. talk about our first interaction. Uh, <laughs> and for our listeners, I booked a part as a bodyguard on Tyler Perry's The Oval and like we've said several times, whirlwind. So this was the first time that I had worked <laughs> with Tyler Perry. So I get to, you know, the we'll call it a compound because it's huge. You know, it's it's enormous. Yeah, yeah. And they take me to the yeah. holding area. And it was insane. Everybody, like, right off the bat was so nice. We go up the stairs and they're like, okay, let's take you to your dressing room. We walk down the hall and there's a door and my character name is on the door and I'm like, this is intense. Yeah. <laughs> and then I walk into the room and there's like a TV and snacks and a pull out couch. And I'm like, what is this? And then someone comes this? in and is yeah. like, Hey, what do you want for breakfast? And I'm like, Oh, uh, wh what do you, what do you have? Cause I wasn't expecting that. And they're like, whatever you want. And I'm like, Denver omelet, I guess. And then bam, I ate a Denver omelet. 
I watched yeah. hockey highlights on YouTube and uh, waited to be called to set. And they call me to set, and we go to that day when we shot. We were at the, uh, I'm sure that, that they have a name for it, but it's like the four mansion house. Yeah, the yeah. mansion in it. Each, each kind of cardinal direction, depending on if you're outside, you look at it from the north, and it's like a like it might be in the Virginia countryside. And then you look at it from this side, and it's like a modern industrial kind of look to the house. And then you look at it from this side, and it's like the country house with the columns kind of thing. Yeah. And so each direction, depending on where you're outside, it looks different. And then when you get inside, even though the rooms are all next to each other, they have the feel of whatever that front facade is on that house. And so it's one structure, but it's really four different sets kind of in that space. It's it's brilliant. I lo- it's insane. I, 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 yeah, I'm always so, like, there's always half of me that's, you know, one eye is looking at what I'm doing on the job, but my other eye is like, how are they doing this technically? You know, there's always my my film crew side that's just really amazed by the whole process. No, it, it really is amazing. Like, I watched yeah. a video about the the compound before we shot, and the mansion came up, and I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And then, yeah. lo and behold, that's where <laughs> we actually were. shot. <laughs> and inside, um, we shot in your house. Right. And or your mansion, excuse me. And then there's yeah. like another door uh, where a crew member was going out. And I looked over and I'm like, oh, my God. And it's just like full white, like modern mansion on the other side. Yeah. And yeah. you and I are in like a brownstone mansion. And then yeah. on the other side, colonial. And then on the other side, industrial. Yeah. It, it was yeah. it was nuts. And the the crew and everybody just runs on this efficiency level that is insane and it comes out of necessity because there's so much shooting and before we get to that um <laughs> our our first interaction together we're sitting in the room in our chairs everyone's going over their scripts and then you come up to me and you're like, hey, do you want to go over our scene? And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? We have a scene together? And you're like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I did not get those pages. And I really didn't. I went back and checked. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. those pages at all. And so you're like, well, do you want to go over it on my phone? And I'm like, uh-huh. Yes, <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't uh, a huge deal or anything because I was, you know, agent agent banks, which I think is funny. It was in my head, I'm like agent Cody Banks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, we go over the scene, and it wasn't a big deal because you know I'm your bodyguard or what, and it's just a lot of yes sir, no sir, I don't know sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it it worked out, but. When we actually got called to set, it was so crazy because I had never experienced anything like this. They bring us into set, and they're like, okay, Agent Banks, you stand in the hallway. Vice President, you stand over here in front of the chairs. Okay, great. Okay, now go to the front door. What you're going to do, you're going to come. You're going to be looking for your wife. You're going to yell her name, and then you're going to yell to Agent Banks, Agent Banks, you're going to come out. You too. Meet in front of these two chairs. All right, so let's do that. And we stood in front of the chairs, and then they look at the camera, and they're like, okay, you got the shot? Okay, great. All right. Agent Banks, go back in the hallway. Vice President, go to the door. Let's run. Let's roll. <laughs> and I was like, and it was literally <laughs> almost that fast. <laughs> and yeah, they're yeah. like. And it's, it's usually Tyler Perry doing that, right? Like, he just kind of like. You go here, you go there, and uh, and then you stand there and do the thing, okay, and roll. And you're like, well, uh, you, you, uh, okay, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, and it was, and we did it, and I was like, oh my god, uh, yeah, I had never yeah. experienced like that kind of, I guess, speed before. Like it, it was, it was crazy. It was, it was absolutely insane. I've been on sets where things happen fast, but this was, this was Different another beast. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, I brings try to explain me... that to people in the industry that I like friends and stuff. I'm like, no, you, you don't understand how fast it is. And it's funny because I think I had the same experience as you did on my first uh, uh, scene on the show, which very thankfully was one of my scenes I did in the audition. So I'd at least sort of put that scene up before. But it was like I, I 
walked into this hallway and Tyler Perry comes out and he was like, are you my vice president? I said, yes, sir. And he's like, great. Uh, I need you to go here, do this. You stand here, go through the door, go here, talk to the, da, da, da. okay, everybody ready? And I was like, what, 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 and they're like rolling. And I was like, wait, I didn't even, uh, okay. Yeah. And you, you're just, you fly into it and you're like, oh, I guess, okay, I can do it. You know, it's yeah. just, it, that, that pace of it is, you know, seven steps faster than you're expecting. But the, you know, as long as you're prepared and you've kind of done the work, the body will just kind of figure it out and, and do it. Because it has to. Um, but, yeah. And I knew that he worked so fast. And so when you and I were going over that scene on your phone, <laughs> um, <laughs> I asked you, I was like, okay, so I know he works fast. What are we talking? Like, you know, two, three takes. And you say to me, uh, more <laughs> like one. And I was like, yeah. okay, <laughs> let's do it. And it, that it really is that. And you just, we're all sitting in the space and a scene is going on and you will just hear quiet on set. And then you'll hear Tyler say action. And then a couple minutes go by and you hear cut and that's it. Next scene. Yeah. And it's nuts. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we finished our scene and I come off set in the waiting area and one of your other cast members, she had just done a scene. She comes off and she goes into this little tent <laughs> where she yeah. changes clothes, yeah. gets hair done and everything. And then Those other people, yeah, yeah. Other yeah. people follow her and these people following her are hair, wardrobe, yep. makeup. And there's a fourth person and sound. Who goes and sound? And the, the sound. So there yeah. was there was five people yeah. with her, and one of them was a line runner, someone who has a script and runs yeah. lines with with yeah. the actors. So there's like six people in this tiny little tent, and I don't know who your assistant director is, but she's amazing. I didn't catch yeah. her name, but she was incredible, and she kept that rolling like crazy. She comes to the tent. How much time do you need? Uh, about 12 minutes and one, I don't know how they're so specific with that, but they're like about 12 <laughs> minutes. So she comes back. Where are we? How much more? And they're like, Oh, we need like 10 more minutes. And she goes, I'll give you five. And she comes back. Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally in the corner, like timing this overhearing yeah. this. She comes back five minutes. Exactly. And she's like, where are we at? They're like, we need more time. And she's like, Nope, we got to walk and do it. So like yeah. six people come out with your other cast member just following her and literally getting her ready on the way to set. It was, it was nuts. I think the best metaphor that I've come up with is like a pit crew. Like if a normal set is like you bring your car to the garage to get worked on and it takes a couple days and then you watch NASCAR or something, you see the pit crew comes in, the wheels come off, the gas yeah. is going in, they're squashing water into his face and they fixed something at the car. And then all of a sudden it's taken off with like a whole new bumper or something like that. And it's like, how do they do that so quickly? But it's, that's what it feels like. You know, you have somebody touching up your makeup, you have somebody putting a lav down the front of your shirt yeah. and trying to put the, the uh, ankles, the ankle pack on. Cause you had to take that off for the thing. And then they're fixing up your wardrobe and oh, I'm trying to run lines across the tent to the next to the person that I'm doing the scene with or yeah. a reader just to like what and there's always this uh, sort of chaotic energy because you try to stay on top of where you are but sometimes things move around and so like you'll almost it, like 10 times a day you hear the like what's the next scene from whoever's you know being uh, judged up at that time right and they're like it's it's five thirteen seven, and <laughs> For the people with the scripts, you know, that's the number on the script, and they see that number, and it corresponds to the scene. But to the actors, we don't learn it that way. And so no. it's like, ah, that doesn't mean, I don't know what, like, what's the first line? And it's like, hello. And you're like, no, no, uh, keep going. Keep. And then you get, like, the feel, okay, I know what that is. Okay, cool. And then you, you try to run it really quick with your scene partner. And so there's all this, like, crazy energy. And it's funny because by the end of the day, you're like, did I – did I just do all that? It's yeah. amazing that like if you, if you just kind of get that groundwork in that you, you can kind of respond and get through the scenes. And like, I, I I'll watch the show and I'll be like, I don't even remember shooting that scene. Like 
That no. was like a seven minute scene. And I don't remember that at all because you're like, so in that moment and it just blows through and I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that, that worked out. I'm into that. So it's, it's fun to, to see the finished project. Uh, once you kind of put in that work and then it kind of helps you to trust the the system and you know, a bit more of how to go in prepared. And so each, each season. So by the time that we had met, this was my third season. So I kind of had a, a bit more of like experience that I could try to like, Hey, this is what it's going to be like. Cause that's what happened to me yeah. on my first season. People were like, listen, it's going to be fast, but it, you know, just relax and stay in it. And I'm like, how fast can this be? No, like I, I don't, I don't like, I, I I've seen fast before. I'm, I'm sure I'm prepared for this. And you get into it. And you're like, I was not prepared for that at all. Um, no. So it's, it's funny to be on both sides of that equation and to see the house really scary it can be when you're first getting into it but then once you see it understand then you you kind of feed off of that chaotic energy and it it works so you you really do yeah yeah and and i just want to say that i i appreciate you because you were very kind to me (laughs) when i was asking these questions and um you did make the experience a little more relaxed uh so yeah thank you for that Uh, i really do appreciate that kind of kindness within the industry because not everybody's like that yeah. you know but 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 like you said everybody like all the crew members are all they're all super professional super creative but also very nice like anytime you have two seconds in between a crazy talk yeah. you can kind of chat with a with a camera operator or something everybody's like you know really passionate about the work and really good at what they do but also very kind and warm and also all the cast like there's you know, some, some of the cast members, the characters are despicable people. And I was a little nervous to meet them. I was like, Ooh, this, I, you know, I just spent, you know, seven hours watching, trying to catch up on what your character is. So I know what I'm supposed to be doing and like, Ooh, this person's mean and you meet them and there's just, everyone is so warm and kind and everyone wants to work and do good work. So it, 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 you know, it, if, if you think I'm nice, everyone is nice on the show. Everyone is really sweet and it just builds into that whole community ethic that, uh, makes this show very special for me. And, and I think that starts at the top, right? Like Mr. Perry is just a very warm guy and he's, he's got a lot of energy and you feel it when he comes on set, like where, you know, the train's taken off, you better get on it and get going. But um, you know, he's, he's warm. He'll joke around as long as, you know, things are on track, you know, things are, things are good. He's, he's just really fun to be around. So that if, if you, if you feel gratitude toward me, I just got to push it up and say, you know, that that starts at the top. And well, and I, really I do feel gratitude toward everyone else because everyone was yeah. super kind. And, sure, cool. uh, you know, Tyler Perry, we did our scene and, you know, he's, you know, it's so efficient and fast moving that, yeah. you know, there's not going to be like a one on one really. But he was there was this moment of warmth because everything is going crazy. Right. Yeah. Action. Cut. You know, okay, next scene, boom, boom, boom. And then for, like you said, for like two seconds, we're yeah. in the uh, in the waiting area. And Tyler Perry comes in and he <laughs> tells like the worst dad joke. And it was amazing. And then he just like <laughs> walks away. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And it's like, that was really, that was, that was maybe on my last day. And that was really the, the, the bow on top yeah. of the present that was like, okay, this is a, yeah, this is a pretty cool environment. Yeah. Yeah. There's something <laughs> special going on. Yeah. yeah I got yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a quick question for you. Um, yeah. When you're talking about just the, the speed that you guys are working on set, how long did it take for you to adapt to that? And also how did it change your mindset as an actor, as a performer? Because so much of it is about how you're, how you're preparing in my mind. I'm thinking, well, you, you essentially can never be out of character if you're going so fast. What, what kept you going in this? And what did you embrace about the, the, the speed of the production? Uh, There's, there's a few different, adjustments that had to be made as far as like staying in character you start to develop a a quicker switch to get in and out of the character in a way because even though the experience I had with my first season was you get caught up in that chaotic energy and the pace of it because the show and the crew and everything is moving so fast but your scenes are actually like 
Like Mr. Perry always wants the scenes to go. He's always like, slow it down. Take it like take your time with because you're you get that energy rolling and then you're like, Brr, there's my lines. Brr, there's my lines. Like no 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 no. That's where you got to slow down and so you have to find a way to like hit the brakes as they're starting to roll the cameras because now that energy is shifting differently and you have to actually do the scene at the pace in which the scene is written, which isn't necessarily the like like you you almost I, I started to watch West Wing just to see sort of like a different rendition of a political White House show. And like everything's moving so fast because they've written tons of dialogue for a short period of time. And this is different. This is more about the interaction between the characters and you, you kind of almost take a beat in between the lines and, and register what's being said and then and deliver your next line. So you, you have to switch into that mode of like, let's slow this down and really like feel the, the, the tension between the lines and what's going on and what's not being said. And, and so when you're in holding, you don't feel like you have to stay in that world and you're just kind of like, I got to run my lines. Okay. Are they fresh? Okay. I can kind of bounce out and, and chat with people. Hey, you want to run lines? We can run this scene. You feel good. I feel good. Okay, cool. Hey, you know, would you, you know, what'd you do yesterday? Would you do that? And you can kind of get into the, you know, interacting like normal humans at that point. And then as you're getting into the pit crew, that's when you kind of ramp back into your character. And really a lot of it is, is like what you're, what you were saying, like the experience of like going through the, um, the, where the, the main actor holding is and, you know, getting into your room and, and you're getting focused for your day and you're getting all your lines and stuff organized for the day. But like when you kind of get into the wardrobe, you're already kind of like halfway there character wise, you know, and it kind of puts you in a certain, in a, in a certain form that, that gets you toward that character. And really it's just, it's like getting on to set and that, that tempo and that, that feeling of like, they're starting to roll the cameras and you're blocking out the scene really quickly. Then it starts to, the, the character starts to arise in that moment. So like sometimes you hear stories, like I, I heard a story recently from uh, the, the dark night where they were saying um, that people were always in character when they weren't and weren't rolling. And I haven't seen anybody on this show do that. You know, like you, you, as the show, as the, the cameras are ramping up, that's when you get back into it. And you need that to be able to separate the, the fast chaotic energy of the production with the different tempo of the scene. So Mm. it's a little technical to get into it that way, but like you, you, you see the the difference there, but yeah, it's it's something else. It's a, it's a cool yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um. So, for every person we interview, we send out a prep document, sort of to help, you know, give you an idea of what you want to talk about on the on the podcast and. I was excited after I sent you the prep document because it was something that you and I share the same sentiment about, and that is the importance as an actor of working on both sides of the camera. So can you talk a little bit about that and kind of tell us how you're implementing that just within your career? Yeah. So my my pathway into getting into working in camera crew was that I found uh, an on camera acting class in Los Angeles. And so I'd, I'd kind of bounce around at some different acting classes and, you know, you kind of pick up a little something here, a little something there. But then I found this one that kind of became sort of my, my home for acting and it's called film actors workshop and it's a three camera studio. And at first it was, it was there for the, the acting instruction. And I was like, Oh, there's a difference between taking an acting class where you're kind of on a stage and it feels more like a theater situation, but there's some different techniques that are useful when you're acting for the camera as opposed to acting on stage. And so I fell in love with this setup. And one of the cool things about the setup was that the students are also operating the cameras. And so I I started to recognize that what I was learning in the class wasn't just what I was learning while I was in the scene, but also what I was picking up just operating the camera. And, it, it, you know, it's, it's rudimentary. You're not doing crazy, you know, sweeping camera movements or anything like that. But as an operator, you start to recognize that if you're on a tight shot and the actor that you're trying to keep in frame is moving around a lot, it's hard to keep that person in frame. And then you have to widen out so you can give them more space to move around. And then each 
we would alternate between filming weeks where we would have the scene up and then uh, the every other week we would review what we had worked on the previous week and then prepare for the week coming up. And so it had this, this cycle of, of studying and then performance and then studying performance. And I can remember when I first started the class, on the days where we would review what we had shot previously, I'd have to wear a hoodie or a beanie because I was so anxious to see myself. I would like hide inside my my beanie like a horror movie and just <laughs> poke. So I just like, oh, I thought, no, I can't look at myself. You know, like when you hear yourself on a podcast or on yeah, um, we are we are uh, swiftly voice learning voice recording that. <laughs> or something, and you're like, that's what I sound like. That's my voice. Uh, so once I kind of got over that, I started to recognize that um, you know a, a close up is a very powerful storytelling device and if you're moving around too much because it feels like you're you know expending energy and and doing something that might work better for the stage it doesn't necessarily work for the format of television so this was this was kind of like the the cross training synergy where recognizing as a camera operator it doesn't work very well to keep somebody in frame if they're moving around too much and so you start to develop a, a trust and stillness that I don't need to move around to make myself understood i can be still and that gives that gives the the director the cinematographer confidence that they can go in for a close-up and you're not going to fall out of the frame and and do something crazy and so little things like that's a very technical way of of describing and i can get into a lot of like little technical things that you learn but it it for me that was good cross training so that i could for, for some people, the more they know about the cameras and the technology, it's a distraction. For me, it was like I was sort of intimidated by all this stuff when I was on set. And I was like, oh, I need to know what that camera's doing. I need to know what that light is doing. And then once I could understand all that, then I could relax and, and get into the performance. And it took me a while to recognize that about myself. So being in this class helped me to understand that and then starting to work. You know, I, I started doing some camera work on some web series and helping out and I I, I built a relationship with a really great cinematographer, this guy named David Chung, and he always includes me on his projects. And if he's got like a little gig or something, he'll let me operate camera and stuff like that. And so working on that side on some, you know, various size sets and different shows, uh, it, it gave me a, an appreciation for everything that the crew was doing. And even if I hadn't worked in that department, I understood what they were doing. And so that helped me inform how I was, you know, as an actor, both you know, on in the performance, but also, you know, just when you're in holding, like I understand what's going on and it, it helps you might get like low energy or frustrated because, you know, there was a technical issue, but like, no, I get it. So I, I can understand that. And then I feel like I can kind of chat with some of the, the crew members and that's always a fun experience to like cross that barrier because sometimes there's a separation there and you feel like you can't talk to them because you don't want to distract them and uh, you kind of learn when you can and can't chat with people, and it just builds a certain camaraderie that I, I that I appreciate, and so I try to try to facilitate that. Um, so these two for me really really help each other, and my work as an actor helps me to understand from a crew side what an actor might need and when is okay to talk to them and when it's not kind of thing. You know when they're you know getting in their mode. Okay, I, they're they're doing their thing. I'm gonna just sit over here and I can do my work without distracting them. And then in the same way as an actor, I understand when the crew members are working and when it's, when, you know, just that, that, the, the, the meat of the production process, it it gives me a greater understanding of that, which is useful for me. So I, I love it. And people always ask me, do you, would you rather act or do you want to work in crew? I'm like, whatever gets me on set. I don't care. I just love, I love being on set. I love being in that environment, the community, the creativity, all of it works for me. So. I completely agree with that. And, you know, it's you said that some of it can be intimidating or some of it can get in an actor's head and they don't really want to you know, learn too much about that, which I can understand. But it, it, it is it is helpful. So for any actors listening right now, learn at least a little bit. And if you find it interesting, sure, learn yeah. more. I think really not even just for actors. I, I think cinematographers and directors also would benefit from doing a little acting, right? And, and writers and editors, you know, like anytime yeah. you see somebody coming from one tradition to another, you see what they bring in that experience, you know, and even if they just do it a little bit, you get that sort of 
that secondary perspective that that blows open more understanding of the whole process. So yeah, it's, there's something to it. Absolutely Definitely. agree. Yeah, and I I, sure. I think um, that it's it's always important both within this industry and outside to to have a certain level of humility and honesty to your, your understanding and your your growth. Being a lifelong learner is is very important. And I've always I've always battled yeah, sure. a little bit with the the kind of fake it till you make it just like say yes and then figure out how to do it later because part of that like yeah that's true but also there like sometimes you you need to ask for help you need you need um um other people to show you how to how to do these things and and showing that humility being humble is is important in all aspects how how has that been uh humility being humble how's that been important to you as an actor yeah i think i I, I connect the humility with the gratitude and these are kind of like my two sort of core emotional drives. There's, there's a value in the confidence that comes from like knowing your craft, you know, whether it's building a camera and you have to know everything there is to know about that camera and the different um, uh, components that you're adding to it and what they're doing and stuff like that. And similar with an actor you know, if you have to learn a skill set or whatever, and you have to have a certain confidence about what you're doing, but it doesn't mean that you have to hold an, an air of arrogance. And I can understand where that might come from, from an actor where a lot of times for actors, you tell someone you're an actor, like, okay, but what's your real job? You know, and so you, you kind of like yeah. develop this sort of jaded edge because you have to like prove to people why it is that you're doing what you're doing. So I, I can understand where people would start to get a bit of an arrogance about what they're doing because they've had to like fend off all of these comments from you know family members like demanding that they do something else with their life. But for me, I, I think because what drives me in my career is my love for the finished project that like before I even get to that part, I'm already just grateful to be on set doing whatever it is acting carrying a camera around, whatever. And that, like, I, I, I'm so curious about what's going on and so excited about that part that, like, I don't even have time to, like, worry about the other stuff. I'm just, I'm just excited. Like, what are we, what are we working on? This is cool. How do we fix this problem? How do we fix that problem? Oh, that looks great. Awesome. Let's go. And so those two things roll together with me. So, like, the, the humility is just a natural part of it, you know, and, and, for me, when I'm approaching it in that way, it, it feels good to be gracious and, and humble, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it, like, it's just, it, it, it comes naturally in that sense. And I think that I, I've, I've seen some sets that kind of fall apart because of different personalities clashing. And I think the more you can sort of instill that, that atmosphere of humility and gratitude the better the set's going to be. And even if there's a problem that comes up, the, 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 the ship as it were can, can weather that storm because everyone is pulling together. And that starts with that attitude and, and that excitement of working together, being grateful for what you're doing and having a humble spirit. So I I think that that that's a very important component to, to have as an individual, but also as part of the personal atmosphere of, of any successful set or pre-production office or post-production yeah. office. I, I love I love the way that you describe it and and the perspective that you have to the the ecosystem of a film set because it it it's it's a sure. it's an ecosystem that is like singular to the film industry and it's, it's hard to understand but you have so much great experience with it especially within the oval you were experiencing this at such a fast pace. <laughs> you, it's, it's almost give, it's given you like a, a great perspective and a great director's mindset. Do you have aspirations to direct projects of your own? Because I think you would be fantastic at it. Uh, that's that's a good question. I don't think anyone's ever asked me specifically if I. I actually had somebody ask me if I wanted to get into politics because of the Oval, and I'm like, no, 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 no that's not my interest in the show. <laughs> have you seen the show? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems terrible. Like, no, this is not the issue. Yeah. <laughs> This is like so much stress in that show. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, you know, I I don't know if, 
if somebody wanted me to direct something, I I don't think I would turn them down. But I don't think that was. I've I've written some screenplays and I've imagined them being produced and I I, I write with the idea of like oh I would like to see this, but it wouldn't like it wouldn't frustrate me if somebody else were to take it and do their thing with it. With everything you're saying, I'm really excited to ask my next question. So I I also teach acting, and at the beginning of every new class, I always tell my students, you have to have a reason for acting that goes beyond money. It can't just be yeah. that. And so I'm just curious, what is your reason? I, I, I like the way that you put that because it, it can't be just about money because there are lots of ways to make money that are easier than acting. And for me, the way I've always looked at it is that I never want it to be about working for the money. I want it to be that the money allows me to keep working. Yes. Um, and so like the, the, the reward is, is being on set, you know what I mean? And the money is just there to help pay the bills and to keep, you know, food in the fridge kind of thing. And really it's, it's about, you know, keep, keep taking opportunities, whether it's well-paid or not, keep taking opportunities that get you on set that get you with creative people. And it's really about having, uh, I, I think I, I used this phrase earlier, but contributing to the tradition of storytelling, right? And even if the, the project you're working on now it doesn't end up being a great version of what you wanted it to be, you're still building on your skill set. You're still learning new things. You're still discovering new aspects whether it's on, you know, a multi-million dollar high-tech, you know, green screen uh, LED volume thing, or, you know, a small student film with, you know, three-person crew and, you know, some young actors. Both experiences, you're going to learn things about yourself. You're going to learn things about the material, and you're going to learn things about the craft. And so if I just take it with that's my aim, then the money is always secondary. And so for me, it's it's just being a part of that storytelling community, that storytelling tradition. And again, going back to the cavemen around the, the fire, you know, that's that's part of our, our history as a as a species. And that's that's what drives me. I absolutely love that man. I really yeah. do. <laughs> I really do. That's a fantastic answer. <laughs> Um, so what now, about you? what's your answer? What's your answer to that question? Oh man. So my answer <laughs> to that question is I got it. I got it locked in the chamber. Um, <laughs> my parents divorced when I was five years old and yeah. movies and imagination and all of that were what kind of got me through those years. Yeah. And honestly, don't know if I'd be here without that. So my reason for acting is to give anybody else who needs that sort of solace and safe place. My reason for acting is to give anybody else who needs that. Yeah. That. Um, yeah. And that's, that's very important to me. That's, so, yeah, that's my reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Joe. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not an actor, so I have a different a different perspective on it. But my my main work is is as a headshot photographer for actors, and I learned that I became genuinely happy with the work when it became focused around helping people, when it became about the yeah. connection that I was having with actors and helping them elevate their careers to the next level. So sure. I, I love talking with actors. I love hearing the types of roles that they want to play and, and the different types of genres they want to be a part of and letting that influence my work, influence the photography that I do. And I, I always tell them, I, like, I want to follow you on social media. I want to follow you on Instagram and Facebook and all of this because I'm going to be there cheering you on once you, you book, once you, yeah. you, you take your career to the next level. So for me, once once my work became about helping and being in service of other people, that's when I became truly happy with it. I love that. Yeah. 
Good answers yeah, all around. I think, that, I think, I yeah. think good answers all around. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think once you can connect that idea of, of giving more than it is about receiving, then you can start to take joy in the, the labor of it, right? Yeah. What's on the horizon for you now, man? I'm, I'm very excited and, and happy to continue working on the Oval for as, as long as that goes. I don't really have a, a good sense on whether uh, the show is going to go for six seasons or 20 seasons. Um, but either way, I, I love the ride, so I'll, I'll, I'll ride the train for as long as they, they want me to be on it. Um, outside of that, I enjoy working as a, a crew member. Uh, I've been auditioning, you know, here and there as well, and I enjoy writing. So if I have downtime, I'll get into, you know, dig through my old screenplays and see if there's anything I can work on or come up with a new idea and then, you know, get excited for when I start getting scripts for the next season. So, yeah. Awesome, man. So a way that Joe and I like to wrap up an interview is by asking you, if you could offer any advice to your younger self, what might that be? Ooh, ooh that, let me think about that for a second. That's a good one. I think, I mean, how much younger self? I would, I would, the person I would like to talk to, the version would be the high school one. So I was, I was blessed to work on a show called Candy with Jessica Beale, And I managed, I think, successfully to hide the fact that I had the hugest crush on her when I was in high school. So I think I would go back to my high school self and say, hey, look, just keep working. Just keep you'll get there someday. And trust me, it'll be it'll be worth it in the end. And you'll get to work with somebody that you really enjoyed working with. And so that was um, that would be probably the the thing. Just just keep after it. Um, There's there's a in, in this industry, there are a lot more no's than there are yeses. And it, it's easy to get discouraged and you have to really find a way to process the rejection in a healthy way to stay productive. And so, you know, I, I, I joke about working with Jessica Beale, but that was, that was really a great experience. And on the one hand for my career where I didn't have success early on and comparing that to her and she's been in the game for so long and still has this this great work ethic. She's so warm to be around on set, and every take, whether the camera's on her or off her, she's just bringing it. And it was really beautiful to see that um, at this point in my career. And it's like, wow, you could be in this game for you know uh, uh, many many years and still have that kind of passion about it. That was inspiring. And so I would want to take that that little nugget of inspiration and make sure that my high school version of myself could could have that so whatever i had to tell the high school version that probably wouldn't listen to me and be like what's this old dude trying to tell me <laughs> but yeah just just stay after it keep keep chugging yeah i like that good advice <laughs> joe you got anything else no I, I i i don't think so this is this has been uh a really nice conversation. It really I has. Did, I did mostly yeah. listening here, but it was really nice <laughs> hearing hearing you guys talk about um, um, it's like your your mindset behind behind acting. And I I, I always yeah. like to say just I, I appreciate you being so open about all yeah. of this stuff and passing on this information because I know someone's going to hear it and really take a lot of amazing amazing information out of there. So so thank you so much for talking yeah, to so. us about this. Yeah, yeah and thanks I for, thanks for having me. Of course. And uh, yeah, not kidding when I say it would be great to have you back and just talk more about acting and yeah, and movies. Sure. We, could, we could do a whole one on, mm-hmm. on just movies. Yeah, We could do a whole <laughs> podcast on just yeah. aliens, I think. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm going to write you down as a regular guest. Yeah, <laughs> friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, every other week. Um but uh, I, I truly mean that. And all the sentiments that Joe shared, uh, thank you for being Great. so open with us. And yeah, thank you for being here, man. And yeah, good luck to you in the future. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. And good luck to both of you. Excited to, to work with you soon. I'm, I'm hoping they'll, they'll bring you back for my, uh, my uh, 
what was it, the the uh, Secret Service detail? That's what they call it. Yeah, it's always fun. Agent uh, Banks. So let's yeah, we could, let's, yeah, we could, let's bring him back. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, man. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I'm you. excited for what's what's coming up for you. Yeah, likewise. Best of luck, fellas. Thank, thank you. you.